He's got a plan. That's Melvin's saying right there. He's always telling us in prayer, God's got a plan. God's got a plan. And Mr. Melvin, you're absolutely right. He has a plan for each and every one of our lives. Man, how many of you know God is ready to bless you? Come on, amen? He is waiting. Listen, he is standing there ready to bless you. And, you know, when we think about the miracle power of God and how important uh, the miracle power of God is. It just touches our heart and helps us understand who He is and what He is and what He can do in our heart and life. I want to minister to you this morning, you know, about the thought of stepping into your miracle. And a lot of times the enemy will use things to try to keep you from getting into your miracle. How many know he can use negative words? Come on, are y'all with me? He can use, listen, things that try to set us off or people will try to uh, dissuade us or discourage us. And we see this happen all the time where, uh, you know, you get a word or you get something spoken in your spirit and it just begins to attack you or come against you. But I want you to understand that God's ways are higher than our ways. Amen? And his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And when you're fighting for that miracle, you have to focus on him. You have to lock in and focus on the Word of God. And you have to be obedient to what God tells you to do. And sometimes that obedience is not easy. Sometimes it, it is hard to walk out the steps that God has spoken to our heart in life. If we run ahead, we get in trouble. If we lag behind, we get in trouble. And so we have to be uh, people that will follow uh, the voice of the Lord. And so, Lord, as we come into your house today, we just thank you that you are the author, you are the finisher of our faith. We thank you today that nothing is impossible with you. All things are possible uh, with God. And so, Lord, I pray today that you will bless us today. You will encourage our heart. You will strengthen our heart. Lord, you will lead us into the steps of our miracles. And we're going to give you the praise. And everyone said, Amen and amen. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, I'm believing for my miracle. Come on, tell them today, I'm believing for my miracle. And as you're believing, listen, for your miracle, let's understand, yes, let's understand uh, the steps that it takes uh, to walk into our miracles that God uh, has for our life. And so, you know, as we, we go to the Word of God today in Joshua chapter 3, and I begin to think that, you know, the, the children of Israel, they are standing in such a familiar place. You know, when, when I looked at this story, 40 years prior, other parents had stood in the same place. And on the brink of a breakthrough, on the brink of, uh, of having either something happen that's going to transform and bless their life or, or something that's going to happen like a breakdown, and uh, mess them up. You know, they had a, uh, we know that their, their forefathers, their families, they had faith failure. And uh, they begin to doubt. They begin to complain. And when we doubt, when we complain, we miss uh, the positive things of God. When we get in negativity, uh, it will always talk us out of our miracle. But how many know faith will cause us to be positive? Somebody say amen. And faith will push you uh, towards your miracle. And so as they forfeited their promise, we understand that they're still God's people, and he cared for them, and he sustained them for 40 years in the wilderness. He watched over them. But once all the doubters died off, the Lord said, I'm going to take you in to your destiny, and I'm about to uh, release unto you uh, the promised land, which I promised that I would give you. And so, you know, when, when I look at these scriptures beginning in, in chapter 3 of Joshua, and uh, we're going to read a few verses here beginning uh, with verse, verse number 11. He says, See the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth. It will go into the Jordan ahead of you. And this, he said, choose 12 men from the 12 tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. And as soon as the priests who carry the ark of the Lord... The Lord of all the earth set foot in the Jordan. Its waters begin flowing downstream, will be cut off, and stand up in a heap. So when the people broke camp to cross the Jordan, the priests carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them, and 
the Jordan was in flood stage all during harvest. I got a picture of this when I was pastoring my first church in Bisco, Arkansas, uh, in, in the south uh, part of that town. It was all, uh, you know, just levees and fields. And when flood season came every year, that's where all the duck hunters came. Uh, because it, it was unbelievable how the water, it just looked like a huge lake. It would just take over the south part uh, of the community. And I want you to understand that uh, it was flood season, and it couldn't cross. And in parts, it was very deep, and, and the water was moving and flowing. And I begin to think how the water from upstream, you know, the water's edge, you know, stopped flowing. And it piled up in a heap a great distance away at a town called Adam in the vicinity of Zarethan. And while the water flowing down to the Sea of Arabia, that is the Dead Sea, was completely cut off, and the people crossed over opposite Jericho, and the priests who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stopped in the middle of the Jordan, and they stood on dry ground. And while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. In other words, the Lord told them, just like he told their forefathers, he told Moses, stretch out your rod, you know, get your rod out, stretch it out. I'm going to uh, divide this Red Sea and Pharaoh was hot on their heels and his armies. And you know the story as Moses stretched out, uh, the Lord began to blow with a strong east wind. And I want you to understand that as he blew from his nostrils, the Red Sea began to open up. And when I started thinking about how God, he opened up the way uh, so that he could make a way. And I want you to know that the enemy will throw everything uh, at you to try to mess you up. But you know, God has something better. God has something uh, for you today. Uh, you know, I'm telling you, your miracle is so close to coming into uh, uh, to realization. And, and I want you to know that, uh, you know, we can't just be satisfied with what we've had or, or what we think we've had, you know. I want you to know we have to step over and we have to believe that uh, God is doing a new thing. And every promise, it comes to us with a promise. And, you know, there's no victory without a fight. There's no testimony without a test. There's no crown without a cross. There's no resurrection without a crucifixion. There's no healing without a sickness. There's no deliverance without a fear or fire. I want you to know only God can turn a mess into a message and a test into a testimony and a trial. Come on, are you hearing me this morning? Into a triumph. Only God can turn a victim into a victor. Come on, amen? And every promise, listen, it comes with a price. What you're stepping into, what you're believing for, the enemy will try to talk you out of it. The enemy will try uh, to put roadblocks in your path to try to mess you up. But I want you to know there's a Jordan for each and every one of us to cross. Your Jordan may be different uh, than my Jordan this morning, but the same fact uh, stands between my promise and me and between you and your promise is the only way you and I can get through is by the promise of faith. Come on, amen. And you have to believe for the impossible uh, to become possible. Uh, you can't float over on feelings. Feelings not going to get you uh, across. You can't run over on past experiences. You can't get through on a secondhand knowledge. I want you to know religion and denominations are not going to get you through. The only thing that can conquer that Jordan is living by faith and walking by faith. You walk by by faith and not by sight. And I begin to think as the children of Israel in our text today are looking at that raging out of, uh, I want you to know, out of flow, Jordan River in flood stage. All of a sudden, the leader, General Joshua, he gives the priest the command, take the Ark of the Covenant, march out into the flood waters. And as they march out into the flood waters, he gives the priest the command, 
follow the Ark of the Covenant as they step out and uh, begin to step in to the miracle to which God had told them that they would have. I want you to know as they stepped over into the Jordan, their, their feet perhaps begin to sink in the mud. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I can just picture it. But they start moving, not away from the promise, but they're moving by faith toward the promise, the promised land. And so you can't go by what you're seeing. You can't go by what you're hearing or what you're feeling or whatever everybody's saying, you know. You can't go by what your mind mind is telling you or what uh, the news is telling you or anything else or economy saying. I want you to know you have to move because God says move. You have to step because God is saying to you, step. He says, start walking, start moving, uh, start embracing uh, the miracle that I have for you. Go in the direction, not away from your promise, but march toward uh, your promise. You know, uh, you can't uh, be hung up on what, uh, you know, the enemy's trying uh, to whisper into your mind or speak into your subconscious. I want you to understand, uh, you can't wait until, until the water start rolling back. You step in uh, when the flood season is right there in front of you. And so God did it this time. How many know God can do it again? Come on, somebody. Uh, God, he answered this way. How many know God can answer that way? And so it's time for uh, us in the church to take off our training wheels. And it's time for us to get rid of our, our pacifier and our crutches. And it's time for us to step out by faith and to believe uh, for the impossible to become possible. Uh, it's time for us, you know, uh, to hear not just the milk of the word, but the meat of the words. And, and so the Lord is saying, church, it's time to move. It's time to step out. It's time to declare who you are and what you believe. Uh, the time that you step in and you get your feet wet, you know, you got to have enough vision and enough faith to get you off of your blessed assurance. Come on, somebody shout. Come on. And, you know, I begin to think we're so comfortable letting somebody else fight our battle and somebody else uh, get into, uh, you know, their prayer closet. But the Lord is saying, no, it's time for my people uh, to get into their prayer closet. It's time for my people to sound the alarm and get on the tower and to be the watchman that I've called them to be. And I know that the circumstances are rising up against us. And I know that the enemy's trying hard. But Romans 8 verse 31, he says it like this, what then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? You know, it's, it's like a doctor that I had speak to me on Friday. Uh, you know, he was as negative as negative could be trying to talk his talk to me. And, uh, you know, I didn't deny what he was saying, but I said to him as he's talking about his facts and this is fact and you've got to do this and you got to do that. And I looked at him and I said, well, I, I don't do nothing unless I pray about it. Come on, y'all hearing me. I don't make a decision unless I ask God uh, what he wants me to do. And I still believe in 2024 in miracles. Come on, are you hearing me? I still believe that God, you know, he answers and he tries us and he moves in our heart and life. And so, you know, if the Lord tells me to go that doctor's way, I'll go that doctor's way once I have the peace of the Lord in my heart. But I promise you, I'm not going to move till I hear from God and what God is speaking to my heart and what the Lord is telling me right now is walk by faith not by sight you know you step into uh, the fiery furnace you do and watch God do the impossible uh, you can bring down a Goliath uh, with a rock by faith you can watch a miracle happen with just a little meal of uh, fixing a, for a cake and God can take it and cause a barrel to overflow with oil I want you to know it might seem like famine in your lifetime, but I'm telling you, God can turn it around, and the flow can be supernatural, and so what I'm telling you is step into uh, the miracle that God is for you, so the first thing that came to my heart this morning is all, of, all, of, all it takes is a word, everybody say, I need a word from the Lord, 
I don't need a, a word from man. I need a word uh, from the Lord. And when I looked at Luke chapter 5, uh, verse number 4, listen to what he says. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water, let down the nets uh, for a catch. You know, Peter had a professional fisherman, all those guys with him, professional fishermen. Uh, they had been fishing all night. They hadn't caught anything. And the Lord told them, launch out to the deep, let down your nets, and you're going to catch a fish. Now, these guys are trained at fishing. When Jesus found them, they were on their boats. They were mending their nets. And he called to them. He said, I want you to follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Come on, are you hearing me? They were professional of fishermen. This is what they did every day of their life for a living. And I listened to what he said to the Lord. Lord, we've told, we worked hard all night long. We've caught nothing, uh, not anything, not even a blessed minnow. We hadn't caught anything. I've been on them fishing trips. Come on, somebody. And, and uh, you know, we hadn't done any good. And then I, I, I read what he says in Luke chapter 5, of verse number 5. I want to build your faith this morning. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night. We haven't caught anything. But because, listen to what Peter says. This is, uh, this is the key right here. Because of what you say, I'm going to let down the net. Because of what you speak, I'm going to step out and I'm going to believe for the impossible to become possible. And so, as Peter declares, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Didn't matter what uh, the situation declared. Didn't matter what they saw in the natural because they had no fish to show. They fished all night. They threw the nets out. And these guys had caught not one fish. And I want you to know, but the Lord says, if you'll do what I tell you, that situation is about to change. How many know in one instance, God can change your situation? In one instance, He can heal your back, Bobby. In one instance, I want you to know, He can loose the stronghold on your life. He can break the a chain that's been holding you so tight that you've had no liberty or no victory, Casey. I want you to know, He did it for you. He can cause, listen, the breakthrough uh, to happen that you've been praying for. And so what I'm telling you as we look at Luke 5 of verse 6 and 7 you know he says when they had done so they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break it wouldn't be because of their professionalism it wasn't because they knew how to catch fish I want you to know it was because they obeyed of the master come on are you hearing me they obeyed the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when they cast the, the net as Jesus told them to cast I want you to know Oh, something began to happen. Something began to turn. Uh, when I looked at verse 7, so they signaled their partners in the other boat. You got to come. You got to help us. They, they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. You know, when I thought about this, they went from emptiness to overflow. You know, it, it changed the circumstances to a, a mighty outcome uh, from broke, busted, disgusted, uh, to blessed and happy and wealthy in one step. I want you to know the supply I was endless, you know, in such abundance of fish that it almost sank their boat. So I'm telling you, they weren't catching little ones, you know. They were catching big ones. Come on, are you hearing me this morning? Uh, the Lord was blessing them uh, with the best that He had. He had to call others to come and help and bring in the blessings. And it was such an abundance that, you know, it looked like they were going to lose their vessel. And the weeping may endure. I'm telling you, according to Psalms 30, of uh, verse number five. A joy is going to come in the morning. Anger's going to last only a moment. His favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may stay for the night, but rejoicing or joy is going to come in the morning. You know, this pain has got to go. This sadness has got to go. This sickness has got to go. This problem has got to go. Come on, help me this morning. This trial has got to go. This tribulation has got to go. This pressure has got to go. This attack has got to cease. Why? Because joy comes in the morning. You know, when we look at this, all it took was a word. 
but it also took obedience. Peter had to believe that the Word was speaking to him. It was the Word. He was the Word. He was declaring to him, take my Word. I'm going to change your situation. I'm going to make it better. When I look at Luke 5, of verse number 9, for he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish that they had taken. They just couldn't hardly believe it, even though they had enough sense that they obeyed the voice of the Lord. He went from a night season of weary, toesome, fruitless endeavor to a morning season of overflow joy and blessings by stepping into His miracle. You know, when I started thinking about this, it's like the Lord began to bring this prophetic word to me, to somebody who's here today. You know that you have the faith to reach out. You have the faith. Listen, just one step away from your miracle, one step away from your breakthrough, one step away from the blessing that the Lord has for you. You put in your time of toiling. You've been trying. You've went through the fire, so to speak. You've been praying. You've been confessing. And the enemy's been waiting on you to just crumble and fall. But God is saying, I'm about to do a new thing. Come on, somebody. I'm about to turn it around. I'm about to show my power on your behalf. When I looked at Numbers 23 of verse number 19, God is not human that He should lie, not a human being that He should should uh, change his mind? Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? I said it last Sunday in Hebrews 13 verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. How many know his word is never going to change? When we look at this, we say, Lord, we need a word. When they stepped into the waters, as soon as the priest's feet uh, touched the water, something began to happen. I want you to know in Psalms uh, 114, verse number 5, you know, it says it so clearly. Uh, you know, why was it sea that you fled? Why, Jordan, did you turn back? I want to tell you why you fled. I want to tell you uh, why you turned back. Is because, listen, Joshua obeyed the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord told him, you're going to go across Jordan, but there's some particular things that you've got to do. You take the Ark of the Covenant, which represents my glory. You take the Ark of the Covenant, which represents my promise. You take the Ark of the Covenant, which represents my favor. You step over into the Jordan River. You put the priest out there first. You put the men of God out there first. You let them know, I'm coming over here to possess this Jordan. I'm coming over here to possess this promised land. Jericho's not going to stop you. All the walled cities are not going to stop you. You're coming in the power of the name of the Lord of heaven and earth. And I want you to understand as I begin to read this, you know, it's almost like I went to the Message Bible and it says, what's wrong with you? See that you ran away. Oh, you River Jordan that you turn. And it's like you fled and ran off. I want to prophesy to someone right now. There's some things that have been chasing you. There's some things that have been in fact threatening to drown you. They're trying to stop you. They're trying to take you under. It could be debt. It could be sickness. It could be fear. It could be a bad relationship. It could be a, a situation that's running after you. But God said there's a turnaround in the atmosphere. Hallelujah. I hear it in my spirit today. God's getting ready to flip the script. I want you to know it's like the switch is coming on and the blessing is coming. An atmosphere that's going to turn. You've been running. It's been chasing you. It's been trying to devour you and rip you. I want you to know at every angle, but you've got to stop where you are. You've got to turn around and face it. You've got to step toward it, not by yourself, but by the power of faith in the Word of God. And when you step to it, you initiate your miracle. Come on, y'all hear me this morning. You receive what God has for you. See, one step can turn your situation around. It's not time to run and hide. It's not time to flee from your task that is hand. Whatever that step is, you say, I'm going right to it. Adversity, you've got to turn around from me. I want you to know destruction, you've got to run and hide. Poverty and lack, you have to disappoint me no more because greater is He that is in me. A sickness and disease, I felt your touch and tug. You've robbed me of sleep. You've come against me. You've 
tried to bring pain in my direction, but I'm speaking to you sickness and disease. I'm telling you to get away in the name of Jesus. I'm telling you to walk on, step up and get gone because hopelessness, discouragement, you've got to hide, you've got to go because the power of God working in me is telling anxiety to leave. It's telling stress to leave. It's telling bondage to leave. Come on, help me this morning. It's telling fear. You have no authority over me. Confusion. You have no authority over me. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, get gone for it is the power of God who produces my miracle. It is the anointing of heaven that brings my breakthrough. It is the authority of God that releases it into the atmosphere. And I say to you today, whatever you are in my life, get gone because of Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Deuteronomy 28, verse 7. Listen to what he says. The Lord will grant that the enemies who rise up against you, that's all them things I just talked about. How many know they will be defeated before you? Can you believe it? You got to believe it. They will come at you from one direction. How many know they come at you? But they flee from you in seven. Come on, somebody give God praise. They're going to flee from you. Man, I feel the preach this morning. I feel it in my soul. One step of obedience. See, the miracle is waiting on us. You know, uh, we're sitting here saying, oh, I'm waiting on it. No, you're in a process right now. And I'm telling you, you know, but your God is making progress with us. And he's telling us, I'm going to bring you through. Listen to what he says in Joshua 3, verse 17. The priests who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord, they stopped in the middle of the Jordan. They stood on dry ground while all Israel passed by until the whole nation had completed the crossing on dry ground. I want you to know, just like the Red Sea, they didn't cross in the muck and mire. They didn't cross in the mud. They walked on dry ground. How many know that's a miracle? You put water over dirt, sand, and mud. I want you to know it begins to be soggy. It begins, listen, in Arkansas, we have a, that old, what they call Arkansas gumbo. And when you step over in it, man, you just sink up past your knees. Uh, I know uh, back here, Thomas, you, you and Becky know what I'm talking about down south. And you get into that, that Arkansas gumbo, and you just bury up in it. And it buries up high. But I want you to know, uh, God, they didn't have to march through that. There was no muck and mire. He not only blew the water back, but how many know he made a way where there seemeth to be no way? And we're sitting here going, God, I don't know if you're going to do it. I don't know, God, are you able? Are you able? I want to tell you something, friend. He's more than able. He's more than capable to minister to your name. You know, I, I have a hip on this right side that the doctor's, have told me my hip socket is just wore out. It's gone. And every time I come to this pulpit, I'm in pain. Every day I wake up, I've been in pain. I want you to know. And it has gone on and on and on. And I just, uh, I, you know, I'd made up my mind. I'm going to get this thing fixed. And then the Lord began to deal with my heart. And the Lord said, but have you talked to me? Come on, are y'all hearing me? Everybody's telling me, now listen, this is how it works. Everybody's telling me, Pastor, get your hip fixed. Go ahead, get it fixed. You need to get it fixed. No sense in suffering. And that's the right thing to do. But it's not the right thing to do when God says, I can do a miracle. My shoulder, listen to this, was worse than my hip. My right shoulder was worse than my hip. Now look at this. I was healed. I was healed. I was healed. And my, my shoulder, my shoulder was so bad that I could barely put my shirt on. I could hardly put my sock on. I want you to know it was so bad. Constant pain. Doctor said, you need to get that shoulder fixed. And I was about to go get that shoulder fixed. I just couldn't hardly take the pain anymore. And all of a sudden, I, you guys know we had the tent revival. We had all the evangelists come through. I can honestly tell you, I don't know when it happened. All I know, Brother Delmer, I woke up one morning. I went to bed that night just thanking God for my miracle. And I woke up the next morning. I didn't even realize that I went in and do everything I do and prayed and did everything I do. Got ready. And I was in there and I was putting on my shirt. And my wife said to me, she goes, 
let me see you do that again. And I said, what? She goes, put your shirt on. And before, I couldn't even get my arm up to put my shirt on. Come on, are y'all hearing me? And so I took my shirt off. I put it on about 10 times, and we started praising the Lord. And I want to tell you something. I hadn't hurt since. The Lord healed my shoulder. And so I, I, I began to think, you know what? It's, it's time for us to just quit settling. And that's what she's doing with her test, too. We're believing. We're believing. Now, if the Lord says, you go get it fixed, I'm going to go get it fixed. But I'm here to tell you, I believe God can fix it. Come on, somebody. I believe the Lord. Listen, he's still the healer. He's the healer. He's the healer. And I'm speaking to that camera right there. Either we believe or we don't believe. You know, give him a chance that God can step up. You know, and, and I promise you, you'll be the first to know if the Lord tells me, go get it fixed. I'll go get it fixed. But right now, I'm standing in there. I'm fighting. I believe the words you gave me, Delmer, uh, last Wednesday night or Wednesday night before. And he called me, stopped me in the aisle, and he prayed for me. He said, God's going to heal that hip. And I'm believing with all my heart. Keep moving. Don't sit down. Keep going. Listen to these scriptures. Matthew 19, 26. Crystal, let's flow through them. Jesus looked at them and said, with man this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Let's go. Let's flow. For no word from God will ever fail, Luke 1, And then he says in Jeremiah 32, 17, Ah, sovereign Lord, you've made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. Somebody say amen. It's not too difficult for the Lord. Good job, Crystal. Mark 9, 23. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. See, the problem's not in whether he'll do it. The problem is we believe that he can do it. Then he says in Mark 10, 27, exactly, don't doubt. Jesus looked at them and said, with man this is impossible, but not with God. All things are possible with God. Luke 18, uh, verse number 27, Jesus replied, what is impossible with man is possible for God. Jeremiah 32, verse number 27, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is anything too hard or difficult for me? You know, what are you saying, Pastor Tim? All through the Word. I'll just give you a, a few scriptures here, but all through the Word, the Lord is saying, trust me. The Lord is saying, I can do this. The Lord is saying, give me a chance. And I'm here to tell you, you keep moving. You don't sit down. You're in a process. You're making progress. God is on your side. And how many know God can do anything that He said that He can do? And then the last thing this morning is the time is now. You know, in the church world, the enemy is trying so hard to discredit the church and make the church, you know, feel like we just, we're, we're not worth anything or we can't do anything. But I've been using this scripture a lot. And the reason I've been using Hebrews 11.1 1 is because I want all of you to get it in your spirit. Get it in your spirit. It's right now. Faith is now. Now faith is. Come on. Amen. It is now confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. The priest stood in the midst of the Jordan with the ark of God raised in the air and somewhere between a half a million to three million people and they cross over, not in the muck and mire, but they cross over on dry ground. As the priest stepped into the water, they were lifting up God. See, that's the key. That's what the church, that's what we got to do. You know, I, I sent a video out this morning, and, and what I said, I started getting calls this morning early from people saying, oh, I'm sorry, Pastor, I won't be at church today. I'm getting ready for a Super Bowl party. And I thought to myself, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You're getting ready for a Super Bowl party. And the Super Bowl ain't even coming until later this evening. I'm going to tell you what. Every time we come to church, we have a Super Bowl. Come on, somebody. We have a Super Bowl. Why? Because we come into the presence of God. We worship God. We praise God. See, that's what's wrong is that we're so caught up with all this stuff around us. And nothing wrong with that. I like the chiefs and all that. But I'm here to tell you, you know, God is saying to us that we've come to lift him up. Come on, somebody. We've come to magnify his name. 
See, if you need a miracle today, like many people that I read to you on the prayer list, and my prayer list, you know, I don't even cover all of them. You know, they need miracles in their life. And I want you to know, you know, they, they need miracles now. They need it now. And what I started thinking is faith is now. It is now. It is now. The miracle's for us now. You know, even in the lion's den, even in the fiery furnace, you know, somebody's life depends on it. Anybody can praise God a post-Jordan or post the lion's den or post the fiery furnace or post the prison, but there's something about a midway praise, a midnight praise, in the middle, at the moment, in the hurt, in the pain, in the situation. I want you to know before the prison doors open up. Come on, are y'all hearing me? Joshua said, we're going to erect stones in the midst of the Jordan because we're going to remember that the 12 tribes of Israel were represented here. This is what the Lord told us to do, and our foot is going to stand term, uh, firm on dry ground, and this pillar we're going to erect is going to be here forever. And what does it mean? Joshua was saying, this is my going through phase. This is the, the part where we went through. We stepped into the water. The water hadn't dissipated. The water hadn't went anywhere, but we're going through. Some of you are in the worst trial of your life, but you're going to praise him anyhow. Come on, somebody. Some of you are in pain and going through hell in, in your life right now, but you're going to to praise him anyhow instead of throwing up your hands and quitting or, or surrendering you're saying my testimony is i'm going to be faithful i'm going to keep on serving the lord i'm going to keep on praising the lord i'm going to keep on believing what god told me belonged to me see in Acts 16 let me hurry in verse 25 and 26 at midnight paul and silas were praying singing hymns to god and the other prisoners were listening to them And suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundation of the prison were shaken. It didn't happen, listen, till they began to praise the Lord. At once all the prison doors flew open. Everyone's chains came loose. That's breaking the chains. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. And they sang that song of praise unto the Lord. Do you think they feel like praise the Lord? No. Do you think, listen, that the enemy was telling them God had forsaken them? Yes. Don't you understand? He was trying to describe what God could do and all the things that God could do. But I want you to understand, greater is He that is in us than he that's in the world. You keep on praising Him. Even if the sun's not shining right now, even if things are not working like you think they should work, you keep on praising the Lord because joy is coming. Come on. Joy is coming. Joy is coming. Get your praise on because something is going to happen. Then we're going to drop down as the worship team comes back. In Psalms 150, verse number 6, suddenly there was such, let everything that has breath praise the Lord, praise ye the Lord. And then he says, you know, in Psalms 145, verse number 3, great is the Lord, most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Ephesians 1, 3, you know, he says uh, to us, praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's blessed in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Psalms 9, 1, I will give thanks to you. Atmosphere, hear this. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. Come on, with all your heart, not part of your heart, not a piece of your heart. I will tell all of your wonderful deeds. How many of you want to share the testimony when God heals you? Come on, somebody. Share it. Let somebody know God did it with your heart. He healed you. He delivered you. And the last one, Romans 8, 32. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? All things belong to you and I. They belong to us today. God is not fighting against you. I don't blame God at all. I'm not over here criticizing God. I'm thanking God because he's my healer. I'm thanking God because he's my way maker. See, some of you are saying, oh, why did God let this happen? Why I got to go through this? Me and my wife driving to the hospital the other day, and I looked at her, and I said, it's okay. And she said, I don't understand. I said, I don't either. But one thing I do know, I know who holds my hand. And I know who holds my tomorrow. And me and Debbie just began to praise the Lord. And as we were praising the Lord, we didn't let him get us down. 
you know, we just begin to thank him because he's never failed us. He's never failed us. And I want to tell you something. He hasn't failed you. I failed him so many times. I've fallen short of his glory. It could be an attitude. It could be a doubt. It could be fear. It could be any of these things. But he never failed me. Come on, all over this house. He never failed me. Why would I blame him? Why would I blame him? You know, he knows what's best for me. I have to trust him. I have to trust him. I have to trust him, and I do. You do. Let's trust him today. How many of you need a miracle today? Amen? I see hands. You need a miracle. I want you to stand with me all over the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you, this is more important right now, the next five minutes, than you feeding your face. Come on, somebody. It's more important than you rushing off, say, I got to get to my spot. I'm going to tell you something. God can do something far greater. Get your focus. Get your focus on him. I want you to shut your eyes. Jesus, we come into this house. and We bring our needs to you. Lord, I wish I could heal everybody in this house. I'd go through this place. I'd lay hands on everybody to let me. Because that's, that's what I would do. But I know, Lord, you can. You can. And I know you leave that up to us. We have to be willing and receive what you have for us. But, Lord, I just believe. I believe. I believe you're the healer of this shoulder of mine. You healed me. And I believe you're the healer of this hip of mine. I believe that in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I believe with all my heart. I watched all the things you bring my wife through. Doctors were telling me she was going to die, and nurses were telling me she was going to die, and hospital administrators were telling me, oh, your wife's going to die. Prepare. You need to get her affairs in order. Yet I watched you show up. Come on, I'm preaching fact now. I'm talking truth. Doctor said to me, I'm going to tell you fact. Well, I'm telling you fact. They told me she's going to die. That was their fact. But she didn't die. Come on, y'all hearing me this morning. Why? Because the Lord had another plan. And when he has a plan, I want you to know when we believe, things begin to happen. And so today as we come in this house, whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, it could be financial you know, the way that I always deal with my finances, when I have financial uh, problems, I just give. I give because the Word of God tells me over and over and over and over and over again that He will bless me. Come on, are y'all hearing me? I believe the Word. I don't withhold my giving from God. I give. And then when I have a need, I take it to him, and I say, Lord, here it is. Here's my need. And as the Lord told me to preach to this church a few, few weeks ago, it's time for us to fast and pray. I've been doing that. Get serious about your relationship with God. You've never really got to that ultimate in your prayer life until you fasted and prayed. Why? Because it can unlock things. It can change things that just regular prayers can't change. Or unlock. What are you saying this for, Pastor? Because some of you are at that point. And the obedience, just like they had the obedience, you think for a moment, them guys carrying the Ark of the Covenant didn't think if we walk out in this water, we're going to drown, we're going to sink. But Joshua said, we got to. It's the only way to get across. It's the only way to get our miracle. It's the only way to step out and believe. And so as they stepped out, the water began to rush up. All of a sudden, it began to move back. I can't imagine. I can just picture it in my spirit. What a miracle. But I'm telling you today, your faith is now. 
It is now. And so you don't need me to touch you. You don't need somebody else to touch you. You need to believe and let him touch you. All over this house, Lord, we're lifting our needs to you. We're praising you right now. Come on. We're magnifying you right now. And so, Lord, we lift up our needs. Come on, all over this house, we lift up our needs to you. Whatever those needs are, whatever those situations are, whatever the enemy's brought against us, we give it to you. We give it to you. And as Rachel and his worship team begin to sing this song, I want us to just praise him as they're singing this song. I'm sorry, Rachel, but I'm not going to move. I'm going to stand right here. I'm just going to praise him. Hallelujah. I'm going to praise him because he's my healer today. He's my healer today. Come on, hallelujah. Let's lift up our hearts. Go ahead and sing. And as they begin to sing, let's praise him. Whatever your need is, here it is. We give it to you.